Do you know the secret flower code? By the end of this video, you will. Get ready to dive into the enchanting world of floral communication and discover a whole new way to say what's in your heart. What if I told you that the bouquets you give and receive might be saying more than you realize? What if the flowers you choose could reveal your true feelings, even if you're not aware of them yourselves? For centuries, people have used flowers to convey hidden messages and express their deepest emotions without ever saying a word. This ancient practice is called floriography, and it's a fascinating code that's been all but forgotten in our modern world. In today's video, we'll unlock the secrets to the language of flowers and explore the rich history of floriography. You'll learn how to decipher the hidden meanings behind common flowers, and we're going to create our own bouquet with a specific meaning. And you'll use this powerful language to express yourself in ways you never thought possible. The history of floriography can be traced back to ancient civilizations, such as China, Greece, and Rome. But it wasn't until the Victorian era that this secret language really blossomed. In a time when open expression of feelings was considered improper, people turned to flowers to communicate their deepest emotions. Imagine a young Victorian lady receiving a bouquet from an admirer. To the untrained eye, it might just look like a pretty arrangement of flowers. But to those well-versed in floriography, each bloom had a specific meaning. A red rose might signify passionate love, while a yellow rose could represent friendship or jealousy. The way the flowers were arranged and the colors chosen all contributed to the overall message. During this time, countless floriography directories and guides were published, each offering a slightly different interpretation of the meaning behind the flowers. And people would study these books very carefully, memorizing the symbolism of each bloom to ensure that their bouquets conveyed the right message. It became a popular pastime to exchange small talking bouquets called nosegays or tussie mussies, which could express anything from admiration to rejection. And the influence of floriography extended beyond just romantic relationships. Flowers were also used to express sentiments of friendship, gratitude, and condolences. A bouquet might be sent to congratulate somebody on a new baby or to offer sympathy during a time of loss. Even the way a ribbon was tied around a bouquet could hold special meaning with different knots and bows signifying different intentions. As times changed and communication became more open, the strict adherence to the rules of floriography began to fade, but the fascination with the meanings behind flowers has never really completely disappeared. Today, many people still associate certain blooms with specific emotions and occasions, even if they're not aware of the full history behind the practice. So what can floriography teach us in our modern world? For one, it reminds us of the power of nonverbal communication. Sometimes a simple gesture like giving a thoughtfully chosen bouquet can express our feelings more eloquently than words. It also invites us to slow down and appreciate the beauty and symbolism of the natural world around us. How fun would it be to grow flowers that hold specific meanings so that we can share them with friends and family? While today we might not be as strict about adhering to the Victorian rules of flower symbolism, understanding some of the meanings behind different blooms can still add depth and significance to our interactions with others. In the next part of the video, we're going to dive deeper into the specific meanings of common flowers and how you can combine them to create your own personalized message. Get ready to unlock the secrets of the enchanting language of flowers and discover how you can use flowers to express your thoughts and feelings in a whole new way. The popularity of floriography during the Victorian era ended up with tons of dictionaries and guidebooks being written. But some of these books had totally different meanings. One famous example is the confusion about the yellow rose. In some floriography guides, the yellow rose symbolizes friendship, joy, and warmth. But in others, it represented jealousy, infidelity, or even a decrease in love. Imagine the potential mishaps that could occur 
if the sender and recipient were using different books for the language of flowers. Despite these inconsistencies, floriography remains a fascinating and meaningful way to communicate through flowers. The key is to be aware of potential misinterpretations and just use context clues to convey your intended messages clearly. One example is to include a small little tag that has a decoder for each of the flower types. I think this is a great way to do it. The beauty of floriography lies not in the specific meanings assigned to each plant, but to the thoughtfulness and creativity that you put into your bouquets. And the act of selecting and arranging flowers with certain intentions can be meaningful and also really make the recipient feel special. And it helps you to focus on the emotions and sentiments that you want to convey with your bouquet. I recently read the most wonderful book called The Posy Book, written by Teresa Sobankaya in 2019. And it gives us some wonderful suggestions on how to use the language of flowers today. Teresa's book provides a new language of flowers dictionary, as well as some wonderful posy recipes. And I think the most brilliant idea that she shares in the book is to include a special tag with the bouquet that lists the meanings of the flowers included. This is a great way to avoid any misunderstandings in the meaning of the flowers. And it's also a wonderful way to ensure that the sentiment you want to send gets communicated properly. Now, let's try to put all of this language of flowers into action. My neighbor's daughter is graduating from high school, and I thought this would be a great opportunity to bring her a bouquet to congratulate her. So I went up to the store and got some calla lilies. I got some mint. I got some Peruvian lilies, peonies. I did get a little bunch of eucalyptus and some pink carnations, as well as some arborvitae from the yard. My plan was to put the posy into a little crystal vase that I purchased. And so I just put all the flowers in front of me and started with the peony. The peony was gonna be the center flower. And then I just worked to clean up the leaves and add the other flowers around so that I had a small round bouquet. So I'll just show you how things went. Well, I hope you loved learning about the language of flowers. That's it for this video, and I'll see you in the next one. Anywhere feel like